The goal of any model is to explain a dependent variable by several independent variables, sometimes called predictors. But which predictors are useful and how many predictors should we include into our model is usually unknown. These questions are important because if we take too many predictors, we'll overfit the model and explain the noise in the data instead of uncovering true relationships. While if we include only a few predictors into our model, we'll underfit the model and probably miss some potentially important relationships. Thus, we need to find the best model with an optimal set of predictors which explains maximum of our dependent variable without explaining the noise. One of the most common solutions for finding the best model is a stepwise variable selection. But it's not the best solution out there. And here is why. Stepwise selection applies to your main techniques, forwards and backwards selection. But there are two problems with it. First, Forwards and backwards approaches would often not converge to the same model, like in our example. And secondly, even if they converge to the same model, this model might not be the optimal one. These problems occur simply because stepwise selection doesn't look at all possible models at the same time. They just remove or add terms one by one, compare to models, take the best model of the two, remove or add another term, etc. In contrast, GLMulti, our package, builds all possible models with all possible combinations of predictors and optionally even their pairwise interactions. Such approach was called brute force. GLMulti then compares the amount of useful information models provide. Such model comparison is done with the help of information criteria. For example, AKX information criteria or Bayesian information criteria. Information criteria are used instead of other metrics, such as R squared, because they show the fitness of the model, where this fitness is penalized by the number of predictors a model incorporates. In contrast to information criteria, R squared will always increase with the increasing number of terms and will eventually overfit the model. And, as described before, an overfitted model is bad because it describes the noise rather than genuine relationships between variables. Consequently, we can't trust the coefficients and p-values of overfitted models. That's why we need to create all possible models instead of using stepwise selection. And we need to compare models using information criteria instead of R squared. And while brute force approach is great, the number of models to be considered can easily become exorbitant. However, there are several possibilities to reduce the number of models and to decrease calculation time. Let's get into the code and see how to do that. First, you have the formula with the dependent variable on the left side of the tilde and all possible predictors on the right side of the tilde. For this example, we'll study the salary of 3,000 American workers with five predictors – job class, education, age, health and health insurance. Then we'll tell R which dataset to use. In this case, we'll use the wage dataset from ISLR package. Crete specifies the information criteria to be used. The default is the AKIC information criteria, AIC. Other options are the Bayesian information criteria quasi-AIC for over-dispersed or count data, and the small sample corrected AIC, which I personally prefer because for big samples it always gets the same result as ICAKE's information criteria, while with small samples it performs better. The argument level is important. It specifies whether all possible models supposed to be built without interactions, level is equal to 1, or with interactions, level is equal to 2. The argument method explores the candidate set of models. Method equals D counts the number of candidate models without calculating anything. For our example of 5 predictors, we'll have 32 models without interactions and 1921 models with interactions. If method is equal age, an exhaustive screening is undertaken, which means that all possible models will be created. If method is equal to G, the genetic algorithm is employed. 
You then specify the distribution family and the fit function, where any function similar to LM or GLM can be used. Lastly, conf set size argument allows you to keep a particular number of the best models, so called confidence set of best models. 100 is the default value here. So now let's run the exhaustive algorithm and see how much time it takes to compute 1921 regressions and to find the best model for our five predictors with interactions. Tick and talk functions from TikTok package would record running time for us. Fortunately, the exhaustive method took only 19 seconds. Not bad at all, if you ask me. However, I usually have way more than only five predictors, which could cause performance problems. That's why we need to talk about the performance improvement techniques. And the first one is to remove all unnecessary predictors and interactions. Adding only two additional categorical predictors, marital and region, into the wage model above increases the number of models to over two and a half millions. And while it's unimaginable to run so many models in our lifetime, genetic algorithm provides a solution for it. Particularly, having six numeric predictors with interactions, the brute force approach needs almost three hours, while genetic algorithm runs only 40 to 80 seconds and produces almost identical results. So, if genetic algorithm is so cool, why not use genetic algorithm all the time? Well, interestingly enough, with categorical predictors having a lot of categories, genetic algorithms may perform slower as compared to the exhaustive one. For instance, our wage model, which has lots of categorical predictors, took only 19 seconds with the exhaustive screening, while needed 117 seconds till genetic algorithm converged. Moreover, genetic algorithm might have convergence problems and might run indefinitely long, without you having any idea of when or if it ever stops. And lastly, exhaustive method almost always delivers better information criteria values. That's why I'd recommend to produce all possible models, aka using exhaustive screening, aka applying brute force approach whenever possible and only use genetic algorithm for a high number of numeric predictors. By the way, remember in the beginning of the video I said that stepwise selection is not the best method, implying the GL multi approach is better. Well, let's compare the results of exhaustive and genetic algorithms to the results of the forwards and backwards selections and see which is a truly best model. As you can see, GL multi approach produces lower AIC and much lower BIC information criteria. And interestingly enough, the R squared produced by GL multi is right in between the R squareds of forwards and backwards selections, suggesting that GL multi models are neither underfitted nor overfitted. Moreover, in our example, both exhaustive and genetic algorithms have identical results, which will not always be the case, and showed three interactions to be important, while backward selection found eight interactions to be important, which to me sounds like overfitting, which is in line with its highest R squared, and forward selection found only one interaction, which looks like underfitting which is in line with its lowest R squared. So I hope I could convince you that GL multi approach is superior to the stepwise selection approach and produces a truly best model. And while GL multi works fine with the classic functions like LM and GLM, it can also fit some exotic models, such as multinomial models via neural networks from NNet package. Here are the predictions of the best multinomial model. And lastly, despite the fact that there is no straightforward fitting function for mixed effects models, such as GLMare from LME4 package, we can easily write our own wrapper function and use it inside of GLMulti. Now, let's have a look at the results of our best model and interpret them. The output of GLMulti analysis is an object containing the confidence set of models. Standard R regression functions like summary, COF, and plot can all be used to make a multi-model inference. 
but let's start with a brief summary of the results which can be obtained via the print command where we see the most important information such as feeding function the information criteria used to rank the models the formula of the best model and even the number of models which are as good as the best model there are six models which we can also see if we plot our object this plot shows the information criteria values for all 100 models from the confidence set. A horizontal line separates six best models that are less than two information criteria units away from the best model. But what predictors and interactions do those six models contain? Using weightable function, we can easily display them. Here we see the formulas, information criteria, and the weights of our six best models. The weight of a particular model shows the probability that the model is the best model out of all models considered. So while the best model has the highest weight, its weight in this example is not substantially larger than that of the second model and of the third, fourth, and so on. So we shouldn't be all too certain here that the top model is really the best model in the set. Several models are almost equally plausible. So which model should we take then? If all six models are great, but have different combinations of predictors and interactions, figuring out which terms are important may help to choose the best model. Fortunately for us, the plot command with type S argument displays the relative importance of model terms across all models. The importance value for a particular predictor or interaction is equal to the sum of the weights for the models in which the variable appears. So a variable that shows up in lots of models with large weights will receive a high importance value. A vertical line is drawn at 80%, where terms to the right of the line are part of 80% of the models, which is sometimes used as a cutoff to differentiate between very important and less important variables. This threshold is somewhat arbitrary though, so that we are free to set it at, let's say, 50% and include all the predictors and interactions with the importance above 50% into our final model. Interestingly, the very first model contains the age health insurance interaction, which has circa 50% importance, and it would be totally fine to go with that, but since we have so many terms with the importance around 80%, I'm happy to use only those, including education health insurance interaction and the predictor health, because they are far enough from the rest. And if I look at six best models, I'll see that the second model has exactly those terms. So now we did not blindly trust the algorithm and took its best model, but examined the results carefully and made a grounded decision to take the second model as our best model. Now we can easily interpret, visualize and check assumptions of our best model as we always do. And if you want to learn how to test all model assumptions using only one function, check out the performance package.